Greetings and welcome to Prayer for America and the Nations. I'm Walter Zagarevich with Global Vision Ministries, and today I'm being joined by Reverend Dean Turner and by you who have tuned in, and happy Labor Day to all of you here in the United States. I just want to ask you before we go any further, take your phone right now and press that little share button. It's right under the uh, this image, this video that you're watching right now. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm doing that. And I would encourage you to do that right now so that together we may unite in prayer for America, for Canada, for Mexico, for Cuba, for Ukraine, for all nations of the world. We are here to pray for the nations and to pray for you and your needs. Well, welcome to the broadcast. And this is a broadcast we started because we saw the need of prayer for this nation. This nation needs revival. This nation needs a fresh spiritual awakening. And we need God more than ever before. And there are so many needs around the world, people writing in, asking for prayer. We are here to pray for you and to encourage you in your walk of faith. God richly bless you. Brother Dean, welcome. Okay, thank you. It's good to be with you again on this uh, holiday. And uh, you know, as I say almost every time, I'm, I'm so honored to be able to serve the body of Christ in this way. And it's our goal and my personal goal is to be a blessing to you and encourage you and to get the spirit of God moving in your life and meeting all of your needs. Amen. Amen. As you know, it is a holiday here in the United States, obviously not in every country. Um, and, but, uh, you know, um, Jesus said, come unto me, you who are burdened, heavy laden, and basically you that are working hard out there, come unto Jesus. You could get a day of rest today. You could have a wonderful barbecue. That is good. But true rest is in the Lord Jesus Christ. When you can rest in him and when you can rest in his assurance that he is with you, that he loves you, that he cares for you, and he wants the best for you. Is that so, Brother Dean? Yes, you know, it's important. You, you were talking about getting rest. You know, in the scripture, God was very clear that we need to take a Sabbath day. Now, I'm not talking about being just Jewish. I'm talking about everyone that believes the word of God, that God said, it's okay to work seven days, but the, I mean, six days, but the seventh day, I want you to rest. You know, yes. God created the heavens and the earth in six days, and what did he do? He rested. And, you know, and the, the commandments that he gave us is, you need to rest. And we'll find out that if we will obey what God said about taking a day of rest, uh, it'll change your life. And, and things will be better for you, and it'll help you physically, it'll help you mentally, and it'll help you spiritually, because you're obeying what God instructed us to do. So it's important to take a day of rest, even if you have to put it on the calendar or schedule it. Try to get a day of rest every week and let God refresh you and let him restore what you have need of in your life, and that he can bless you more. Amen. Well, God even instituted that the fields, the farmer's fields, need to have a rest every seventh year. And um, it is important because then they recover their nutrients and nitrogen and so on that is not being used for growing crop. So God instituted these principles. And um, I don't know if it was the Soviet Union that at one point attempted to change uh, the week, uh, you know, from one day every seventh day to rest to one uh, day every 10 days. It did not work very well uh, because God did not make us that way. And there are certain principles, there are certain um, certain things that God has established 
And when we violate those principles, well, we get into trouble. You know, our bodies begin to suffer and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're just not made. To, we're made in a certain way. We're fashioned a certain way. And God even rested on the seventh day of create after creation. So um, praise God, Brother Dean. Uh, we know that um, uh, you always have a thought for us, and we want to <laughs> hear from you. So please uh, feel free to share with us. And before we go to prayer, and we pray for needs, and there are needs, uh, both physical healing needs. Uh, I received a wonderful testimony uh, from, we don't always get the, 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 the testimonies. We get the <laughs> request and that we see somebody, oh yeah, you know, this and this happened. Well, it, it, nice to know, uh, you know, what had happened. It encouraged us knowing how God answered prayer and what God did. But, um, we, um, I just received a, a testimony, uh, a day or so ago, a few days ago from, uh, pastor, um, in uh, Mikolaev, and I had him on the broadcast here, and we prayed for people, and he, he recorded a testimony of a woman who was healed watching that. Well, it's in Ukrainian or Russian, so I, I'm not sharing it here, but, you know, it's wonderful to hear those testimonies, uh, and we know that many of you are being touched by God. You're, uh, some of you are writing us, some of you tell us when you see us, but share with us so that we can encourage others with your testimony. Well, Brother Dean, go ahead. Hey, man. And uh, just want to share a couple of things. You know, we, we're we talking about several items right now, but I just want to encourage you about hearing and what you're hearing and how you're hearing. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus, when he gave a, a teaching in uh, Mark chapter 4, he gave it about the you know about the sower sowing the seed and so forth. He talked about the different soils and the different hearts and things of that nature. And then when he was explaining it to his disciples, he said the sower sows the word. And then after he finishes explaining it, he makes a statement that's kind of interesting. It says in Mark four twenty three, uh, I like it in the Passion translation. He says, if you understand what I'm saying, you need to respond. And other versions say, if anyone uh, has ears to hear, <laughs> let him hear. But it's more than just hearing something. It's responding to what you hear. How is it affecting you and what you are listening to? So Jesus had given that teaching. And then he said, if you understand what I'm saying, respond. And that's an important key that we act on the word that we hear that is revealed to us, because if we don't act upon it, how can it affect our life? So it's important to not only hear and to understand, but then to respond. So in verse 24, the same chapter, he said to them, take heed or be careful what you hear. And with the same measure you use it, you know, put it into practice, it'll be measured back to you. And you who hear, more will be given. You know, it's like the seed sowing, being sown in our life. We hear the word of God. And when we begin to use it, it produces in our life. And if we will continue to hear and continue to respond and act on it, it grows in us and we receive more revelation, if you please. So it's very important that be careful how you hear and what you're hearing. You know, we have a lot of things that are going on in the world today. And there's lots of negative things. There's lots of positive things, too. And we hear these things, but we have to be careful. What am I listening to? And what am I paying attention to? Because it'll be very easy to get discouraged if we start listening to all of the negative things. So Jesus was very clear about that. Be careful what you hear. You know, it's what we hear, positive and negative, can and will affect us. So we need to be careful what we are hearing. Okay. And then when Jesus said, putting our what we heard 
into practice what you've heard. You know, the scripture tells us in Romans 10, 17, that our faith comes through hearing the word and hearing by the word of God. And I like what it says in the Passion Translation about that. When we hear the word, it says, faith then is birthed in a heart that responds to God's anointed utterance of the anointed one. So faith will be birthed in you and it will grow. If I'm listening to the word of God and I'm responding to the word of God, I'm doing what it says, I'm obeying it, then this word, which comes from the anointed one, Jesus Christ, will then cause our faith to rise and cause it to be birthed inside of us to where we will be able to stand and have more faith. But it goes back to what you are you listening to? Are you listening to things that are negative? Are you listening to the word of God? And I'll tell you, as you start searching out the truths in the word of God, the Holy Spirit will revert, reveal truth to you. Faith will be birthed in your heart. And then you'll learn to live in victory uh, in, of, uh, you know, in that faith. So I know this context of this passage here in Romans 10, 17, the whole context is talking about a salvation message and about hearing the good news of the gospel and receiving that salvation. But when we hear and pay attention to and respond to the right words, then faith in God is born in our hearts. You know, it's a principle not just for the preaching of the word of salvation, which is very, very important. And it works there, but it'll also work at every other aspect of your life. You will seek God, seek his word, and let him speak to you and let that faith be birthed inside of you. Then we'll be able to do whatever is necessary to overcome. Because remember, Jesus said, take heed, be careful what you hear. The same measure you use it, you know, put it into practice. It'll be measured to you, and to you who hear, more will be given. And when we talk about faith and doing the word, it's not enough just to hear the word. James tells us in James 1.22, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. We have to use our faith the right way and speak the right things. You know, I can hear things, but if I don't pay attention to it and I don't let it get inside of me, then I don't use it. Then how can it affect my life? In fact, you know, back like James, he was kind of blunt when he said in, in 2.14, the first part of that verse, he says, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? <laughs> New Living says, what good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but don't show it by your actions? Mm. And then he talks about, you know, faith by itself without actions, it's dead. So pay attention to the right message. And when faith comes, use it and let it change your life. You'll be surprised what begins to happen as you put this process into practice. Amen. Amen. So hearing is so important because as we see, Paul said that faith comes by hearing, hearing God's word. So uh, obviously somebody has to preach that, but someone has to hear it. But when there is hearing of the word of God, and it, it does give faith to us again, because it, it is true. What we hear does affect us. You know, if we hear a bunch of negative things and so many bad things that are happening around uh, the world, well, it starts pushing us down. It starts um, in some ways weakening our faith because we start believing that um, start feeling hopeless, start believing that there's no hope, there's no way out, just throw up your hands and give up or go in a closet and hide. No, we need to hear what God says concerning every circumstance. And God's word is clear. And so it's when we hear so many voices today, 
and they come at us from so many places, we need to be careful what we allow to come to us. And um, again, as someone said, I don't know if it was C.S. Lewis or who said, you can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can certainly stop it from making a nest on your head. And you may not be able to stop thoughts from coming at you, but you certainly don't want to allow them to be deposited in your mind because you, you don't want to give place to the devil. You don't want to give place to those things that the enemy is throwing at you, bombarding you with. And there are so many, there are so many things that are happening. We can talk about all the evil that is going on, but we need to look to God's word. And in the midst of all of these things, God has not changed. His word has not changed. His purpose has not changed. His promises have not changed. And God still wants to save people. And God is saving people. But we need to stand in faith and pray as we are doing here on this broadcast and take authority over the demonic spirits that are trying to destroy us, uh, the, our nation. And if when you hear us praying for this nation and you are in another country, pray for your nation. We pray and God answers prayer. Isn't that so, Brother Dean? Yes, it is. And as you were talking about, you know, hearing and believing uh, and that's your faith being built. You know, when we hear the word of God, then faith in God is built. Yes. But also it works on the other side. If I am listening to and paying attention to the things that are opposite of what God's word is, that also becomes a form of faith because we believe the negative report instead of believing the word of God. You know, Isaiah said in chapter 53, he says, who has believed our report? The word of God is a report. And when we believe that, then faith in God is built and not faith in other things. That's why it's important, like you're saying, that we uh, that we listen to the right stuff. That's right. And, um, and, and then when we act, as you have pointed out, we need to release our faith or put it into practical action. And we often do this. I've done this in evangelistic campaigns and meetings where I may pray for many people. Um, and I will say to them, uh, now put your faith into action. Try to do what you could not do with the faith, believing that God has heard the prayer, uh, that God has answered the prayer, and you believe that you have the answer. Now put your faith into action. Like Jesus said to the paralytic, get up, take up your bed and walk. Well, that man is laying there. They brought him through the ceiling, through the roof that he couldn't walk. There's no way. And yet Jesus commands him to take up his bed and walk. How can that be possible? Well, he believed what Christ was doing. In fact, he has such faith that if he could get to Jesus, he was going to be healed. He let his friends take him to the roof of a house and lower him uh, down to where Jesus was so that he could be right there where Jesus was. And let me tell you, uh, Jesus never disappoints. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you know what? He had to do something. He had to obey Jesus, when Jesus said, get your bed up and walk, I mean, he could have said, Lord, you know, I can't walk. <laughs> I'm laying here. How can I do that? No, he obeyed. He obeyed. He believed and he obeyed. And so he put his faith into practical action. He tries to do, he starts doing what his body is telling him he cannot do. He's picking up a bed that he's not supposed to, he's laying on. <laughs> so he's picking up this, this cot that he was brought up and, and he's, he's, he's begins walking. Well, isn't that how it works, Brother Dean? You know, in that particular uh, instance in the scriptures, it's, uh, there's an important point there. You know, there were a lot of people in that house, and it was full of religious leaders and everything else. And the scripture says, and the power of God was there to heal. And this man had to access this power of God to heal 
by releasing his faith, Jesus told him, says, now get up. But if he had not released his faith to believe in what Jesus was saying, then he couldn't access the power of God that was there to heal. He had to, like you say, exercise his faith. And when Jesus says, get up, boy, <laughs> he got up and he took off. And then everybody was saying, whoa, you know, they were, uh, well, there's more of the story. <laughs> yes. What's interesting, too, is that when you take that full house or full building where he was speaking, I don't know how many people there were in there, but it says it was packed. Obviously, they couldn't even get in with this sick man. So when you take a percentage of people, whether it be 100 or 200, there's a percentage of people typically that are sick. So there were sick people there. I'm sure of that uh, just by, by the fact that uh, there are so many people. And yet not one of them was being healed, even though, as you have pointed out, the power, the Bible knows very specifically that the power of God was present to heal. So there was a special presence of God for healing in that meeting. And yet not one of those is healed. Why? Because they did not have faith. They had the opposite. They came to criticize Jesus. They came to try to find some fault in him. And, the, and, and yet the, the answer to their need was right in front of them. But they came with the wrong attitude, and they certainly did not receive. But this man, who, as we pointed out, was sick, couldn't walk. His friends bring him on a stretcher, had such faith. Well, the Bible says he saw their faith. Well, he saw the friend, the Jesus saw the faith of his friends and him, obviously, by their action. How do we see faith? Well, he said, well, Jesus is God. Yes, but when he was on earth, he did not rely on that. He operated like you and I, depending on the Holy Spirit, depending on God. And so it's it's he saw their faith by their actions. Or you take the centurion who um, wasn't even Jewish, and yet uh, uh, Jesus says, I have not seen such faith in all of Israel as this man had displayed, who said, you know, Jesus, I'm going to come to your house to to heal that your servant or your, I forget who it was, someone in his home. And he said, I'm not worthy of you coming into my house. Just speak the word. He understood that if Jesus gave the command, like he as a Roman centurion would give a command to soldiers, that if Jesus spoke to the sickness to be gone, that sickness would leave and that person would be healed. And, and that's what ex exactly what happened. Yes, you know, and it's, it's, you brought out that point that Jesus operated as a man when he was on earth, anointed by the Holy Spirit and filled with the Holy Spirit. And he knew his authority and he knew what God's will was and he knew uh, how, how to function in it. And he believed. Now, it's important that Jesus had to have faith just like us. But Jesus believed that when he spoke the word, that it would happen. The centurion believed it, and Jesus believed it, and both of them had their faith. Their faith together was released through the words that Jesus said and what the words that the centurion said. And the result of it, they spoke the right things, and both of them had faith, and the miracle happened because the power of God is released. And just like uh, Jesus in the different situations, it'd be the same thing with us. You know, we think, well, Jesus is so much higher than we are. And that's true. He is the son of God. But also he became us or became flesh and bone like us. He became a man or a black man or woman of God and functioning in the power and the leadership of the Holy Spirit. So if 
we are in a situation, like for example, if we were facing the same thing that Jesus did, because God is no respecter of persons, if we will operate in faith and authority and command things to happen in the name of Jesus, which is our authority, we can expect the same results that we see in the scriptures. Because why? Because we, I, I, I'll probably get in trouble for this one, but we're just like Jesus on the earth right now. Jesus in heaven, we are his body, we are his representatives, and we can do all things that Jesus did. That's what Jesus said. If we we'll believe the works that I do, you may do also, and even more, because I go to my Father. So if we will believe that we have this authority, and we believe that if we will do what the Word says, then we will have the results that Jesus had. It's exercising our faith, speaking our word, and having authority. But a key in this is you have to believe it. If you don't believe it, then it's not going to work for you. Well, that's why we're going to stop right here and pray for needs. There are people who have a need of healing. There are people who are needing a breakthrough in their circumstances. And we want to stop and pray for them right now because I believe the power of God is present to heal, present to touch people, to set them free of their bondage. So let's pray right now, Brother Dean, for those out there. And uh, we're going to put our faith into action by praying, but we need people to put their faith into action by acting on that answer that you are believing God for, releasing your faith. Try to do what you could not do before. Brother Dean, lead us in prayer. We're joining our faith together. Jesus said, if any two agree together, that he would be in the midst to cause it to happen, in my paraphrase. But we're joining our faith together, and we're going to join our faith with you. And we'll be stronger together if we will just believe and just receive what God has for you. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus who is the one who has paid the price for our healing. He's paid the price for our salvation. He paid the price that was necessary for us to enter into the new covenant with you, Father. So right now in that authority, I say to those who are suffering in their body, whatever sickness they have, whether they're facing cancer, whether they're facing other diseases that are coming to their life, whether they've had a stroke or any of these other things, we say in the name of Jesus, be healed now. I release healing into your life. I speak the word of God. I speak healing into your life. Since by his stripes of Jesus, we're already healed. So based on the word of God and what Jesus said and what we find in the scriptures, we say in the name of Jesus, healing come now. We receive the promises of the new covenant. We receive what you have provided for. The scripture says that you have already supplied everything that we need for life and for godliness. So we receive that promise in the name of Jesus. We receive that life that Jesus gave. Jesus gave, come to give us life and life more abundantly. And we receive that life. And I speak life into every situation that folks are facing right now, whether it be a physical situation in their body, or whether it is a marital problem, or whether it is something else in their home. Maybe it is for their children. Lord, we just speak life into every situation that your life will flow into it. And as your life flows into it, it brings peace, it brings strength, it brings healing, it brings restoration, it brings finances, it brings whatever is necessary and needed at this time. We send the word, and as they receive the word, and they receive the life, 
and they receive what you have provided for, they will be healed. Not only will be, they are already healed now in the name of Jesus. Yes. Every Lord. situation is healed and restored right now in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are healing right now. Thank you, Lord, for those breakthroughs that are occurring right now. Thank you, Lord, for the even creative miracles. Thank you, Lord, for removing that pain right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you that your resurrection power flows to lives in the nations of the world, that one in Africa, that one in Asia, that one in Cuba, in Argentina, in Colombia, in Mexico, here in the United States, in Canada, in Ukraine, in the United Kingdom, in Germany, in Switzerland. Yes, Lord, we're in Spain, where people are watching right now. In the name of Jesus, we speak your word of healing. We thank you that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, we are healed. We have been healed. You already paid for it. Now we receive that. We thank you for that. We thank you for manifesting that healing in our bodies, uh, in our situations. And Lord, we thank you for those financial breakthroughs. For Lord, you became poor that we might be made rich. You took on the curse of poverty also. We break that curse over people right now. We break the curse of sickness. We commend the spirit of fear to leave people. And we commend those lies of the devil, the, those voices of the devil to be multiplied all uh, to be no, uh, nullified in Jesus' name. Lord, we proclaim that we are free in Jesus Christ. Him whom the Son said free is indeed, and we are free in Christ from the bondage and the and the curse of sin in Jesus' name. And Lord, if there's anyone out there watching us right now who is not saved, Lord, we pray for that one, that they would come to know you as their Lord and Savior. If you are that one, just cry out to God in your own words and say something like, dear God, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Come into my life. Take control write my name in your book of life, I ask. I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for me. I believe that he resurrected from the dead, and I receive him into my life as my Savior, as my Lord. Do that. Say that right now, and he will come into your life. He will forgive your sins, and he will make you a new creation. Oh, and that's the most wonderful miracle that can occur in anyone's life. Hallelujah. Well, God is moving. God is touching Brother Dean. I believe people are being touched around the world right now. I said someone in Africa is being touched by God. Someone in Asia is being touched by God. More than one. Uh, several people are being touched. You had needs that no one was aware of, but God is touching you right now. Uh, some uh, God is healing that arm, that leg, that condition that it seemed that there was no way out out, that, that chronic condition, be healed completely right now in Jesus' name. Oh, the power of God is moving. The power of God is present to heal, and He is. there is no distance in prayer. We may be praying for one part of the world, and you are completely on the other side of the world. It does not matter. The Holy Spirit is right there, and He is working in your life. Uh, Brother Dean, Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, we talk about there's no distance in prayer. You know, we speak the word out and it does what it's supposed to. You know, God said that his word doesn't return empty, but it accomplishes there where it was sent. And we as his representatives, we send this word and it continues until it is fulfilled. Yes. The ones that are receiving it and it doesn't return to us empty. 
so you can be encouraged. You might say, well, well, you're, you're, you're way over here in the States and I'm way over here in another country. You know, does it work? Yes, it works. And another thing we need to realize that timing is not an issue because whenever we're praying now, and maybe you see this broadcast a day or two later, the anointing is still going forth from the, the word is still going for you to where you can receive whatever you have need of, no matter of the timing, because the word is truth. And when we receive the word and we believe it, it works. It doesn't matter if it was a few days later. Think about the scriptures. <laughs> How many hundreds of years has it been that we've had the Bible and it still works? In fact, the scripture tells us that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword and it's living. Okay, so it's alive. And so when we have the word of God spoken over us and we receive that, don't think about, oh, well, it's too late. It didn't work or, you know, it's too long. I didn't see it at the right time. No, reject those thoughts. Say, no, I receive the word of God and I right now. I receive the prayer of faith right now. And then you can receive it no matter where and no matter when. God will answer your prayers. Amen. 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 Um, and do write us and let us know what God has done in your life. And we get requests, Brother Dean, from different nations. There are pastors who are struggling. There are needs that they have. Some of them are trying to build a church. Some of them are trying to buy a car. Some of them are trying to uh, deal with some very basic necessities where they're at. And uh, again, as you have said, they may say, well, you're in one country, I'm in another. How is that possible? Well, with God, all things are possible. God's economy is not man's economy. And God is no different. I said, God is no different in Africa or in the United States or in Asia or in Europe. It does not, or South America, it does not matter where you're at. God's word is God's word and his promises are true and God is faithful to his promises. And there are thousands of promises of God recorded in God's word. And most of those are promises of blessing. So God desires to bless you, to bless me. He wants to see those needs met. We need to put our trust in God. And sometimes God works in ways we don't expect. We think a bag of heaven, uh, a bag of money might fall out of heaven, but I haven't seen that happen yet. And uh, uh, there are no money trees, <laughs> but, but you know, God uses people and sometimes in very unusual ways. And sometimes maybe even an unbeliever God can use to bring that to a way of supplying your need. So be open to God and don't put God in a box that God could only work in this way. God could only need meet my need if someone in America helps me. No, God is not dependent on America. God is, owns the, the cattle on a thousand hills, and those hills are his. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Isn't that so, Brother Dean? Yes, and I, as we were talking, I just want to give a little testimony. Yes. Uh, you know, I'm planning a trip coming up pretty soon. We've been discussing it. And uh, yesterday I was having lunch with my pastor. And pastor's wife reached in her purse and she pulled out a check and handed it to me. And when I looked at it, it was the amount that I needed for the trip, all of it at one time. And it was from a totally unexpected source. It's from someone that I don't send newsletters to. It came from someone that I don't visit or have not seen but once in a long, long time. But God will use people to supply needs for the vision. And as I was thinking about this, I thought about the vision. When God gives a vision, then God will give the 
provision for it. You were talking about the different pastors and some of them like in Africa that are believing God for finances to build a building or for some other need that you have. If it is a vision from God, and listen to me, if it is a vision from God and not just a man idea, you know, then we need to begin to say, okay, God, you gave me this vision and I'm going to stand and I'm going to believe you that you are going to supply what we have need of. And then take the first step. Maybe I'll give another little testimony. A pastor friend of mine, they have a, a pretty good sized church in a uh, church down in uh, South Texas. And when they began to have to build a larger building because they didn't have room and the older building just was not working. And they said what they did was that God had given them a vision. And what did they do? They started where they were. They took the first step. They had part of the resources and said they began to start. They would use that. They began, first thing they did, they put the foundation down. And when the foundation was finished, then provision came in for the steel. And then the, when they put that frame up, then it came in for, I mean, just step by step by step because God provided for them. But if we don't take the first step, you know, yes, we use wisdom, but we need to take the first step and say, God, you've given me this vision. I know it's from you and I know that you will accomplish it. So I'm going to start today. I'm going to use my faith. If it's nothing more than driving a stake in the ground, and you say, this is where I'm, I'm going to stand. And then watch God begin to move as you step out in faith. Now, we don't want to be foolish. We want to be wise. But if God has spoken to you, you can be sure that he wants to provide and he wants to do it supernaturally. And God will provide for his vision. Amen. I remember a testimony of a pastor um, who had other pastors and, and daughter churches under him. And one of them wanted to build a church. So they said, well, how big should we make it? Well, how big is your vision? The, past, the, the main pastor said. And so, you know, you, you start digging out that foundation according to that vision that you have and your faith. And so, uh, you know, in some cases, people uh, kind of uh, made a small foundation and that's all that was built. But other ones, they had a bigger vision. They started putting a bigger, uh, digging out for bigger footings. And, and that's what was built there. So um, there is that, again, as you said, it's not foolishness. It's not just doing things out of our own uh, mind. But if God has given you a vision and God has given a vision to you to do something, God will provide. Um, but you have to take that step forward. And I, I like what you said. You start where you're at. You you utilize what you have. Sometimes people, well, well, we don't have it to, to do the whole thing. Well, you start with what you have. You you sow what you have and, and more comes in uh, because sometimes people just uh, wait for the whole amount or whatever. They, there isn't that step of faith. But, um, you know, the Israelites, the first time they crossed the water and that was the Red Sea, the, the waters parted and the land was, the, the, the mud was dried in the seabed for them to walk on. But on the second uh, crossing, which was across the Jordan, they had to, the priests actually stepped into the water up to their ankles. That's when the water parted. So they had to actually step into the water. And that's the part that's hard to step out in faith. <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen. But again, as Brother Dean has said, if God has given you that vision, it's a God vision, then he will provide. But you have to also take certain steps of action. And, um, and and so that's very good. So thank you for sharing that, Brother Dean. I want us to uh, pray for the nations. But before we do that, I just want to say this, um, those of you that are watching, 
Uh, Brother Dean is a missionary evangelist, and he does travel to the nations of the world. We're going to be having a school of ministry in Spain. Uh, what has been happening in Spain is quite amazing. With the um, uh, there are a number of Slavic, that means Ukrainian, Russian, and and other nationalities, people from the former Soviet Union that have come there, and churches have been started in Spain. And with the influx of many refugees during the war, these churches have grown exponentially and more churches have been started in Spain and also now in and also in Portugal now. And um, uh, the head pastor over all these churches had asked us to hold a Bible school there in order to train missionaries and uh, pastors, evangelists, people that will be able to start additional churches in that region. And we feel it is a God uh, thing. I felt that we've discussed this before COVID hit, but COVID came and delayed these plans. But now with even more um, growth in the churches there and a greater need, we are going to embark on this, and uh, Brother Dean uh, will be going there, Pastor Jairo, myself, and we're looking at other teachers being involved in this, but uh, we need your prayers, and this is just one outreach. Uh, this broadcast is one outreach. We uh, do ministry in other parts of the world. We support pastors in uh, Nepal and India who are planting churches, who are evangelizing. We are supporting um, other needs in various parts of the world. I don't want to get into every detail here. We have uh, been ongoing, uh, uh, providing ongoing support uh, to pastors in the frontline zones of Ukraine. When I say frontline zones, these are pastors that are working right close to where the war is raging. Some of them are getting bombed in their cities and towns on a regular basis. They are being the hands and feet of Jesus to feed those and provide urgently needed. Uh, help such as uh, food, water, medicines, uh, candles. Some of these places have been without electricity for, for over a year. And so these require finances. And if God speaks to you and you want to sow, because part of this, uh, Brother Dean could explain to you as well, is that we sow. Sometimes we have a need, but we have to sow in another situation. And um, and we talked about church building programs. I, I think it's sad sometimes some churches when they get embark on a building program, they cut off their mission support. They say, well, we can't do it right now. That's the worst thing you can do. And I'm not saying that because I'm a missionary. I'm saying that because the principle of sowing and reaping is something that the word of God establishes. So if you have a need, you sow to a bigger need. And we do that. We sow. Sometimes we don't have that what we were hoping to have, but we're sowing in and we want to continue to be able to support the pastors and that we are working with in the frontline zones of Ukraine so they could continue to provide urgent, urgent needs there in those areas, getting water to those that are left without waters, without water, especially after the flooding that occurred from the dam, the contamination of water wells. Well, we are doing what we can to help them. And we could only do that as you help us to do that. So I just want to mention that. I don't like talking about this, but it isn't for myself that I'm asking this. This is for that vision that God has given us, and that is to help evangelize the nations of the world. And so in the process of giving out aid, these pastors in Ukraine, they're not just giving out food. They're not just doing it for their churches. They're giving it out to the community and to anyone in need, but they're also preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only offering them physical bread, but the bread of life, the word of God, salvation in Jesus Christ. And many, many people are being saved. The churches are overflowing and these pastors have got their hands full not only working with the uh, humanitarian relief, but there are so many people that have come to Christ who are new 
and uh, they need teaching, they need training, they need encouragement, but they are working hard. So we're helping them as much as we can. And so we rely on God, but God uses people. So if God speaks to you, you want to be a part of this, you want to sow, whether it be in Ukraine or a work in Cuba or a work in uh, Nepal and in India. Um, and as I mentioned, we're going to be having this school in Spain, um, uh, Nia and I are also going to be ministering in Israel in various parts of that nation. We've felt this now for some time, a strong burden, God leading us there. So we're, he we're heading over there. There are other things that are uh, <laughs> other plans, other situations, and uh, we need your prayer first and foremost but also, if God prompts you, not I, but God, if God prompts you to give, give, be obedient to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit says, do something, do something right now. Don't put it off. Do it right now. As you're obedient, God will bless that obedience uh, to you. And you're sowing that seed. You're sowing into fertile soil because you're helping to win people into the kingdom of God. You may not see these people on earth, but one day in heaven, you will see people come up to you and say, thank you for sending so-and-so with help to me. And most importantly, with the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, um, and you will have the joy of knowing that you have helped to bring many into the kingdom of God. And I can tell you literally that we've helped to uh, evacuate thousands of people. We're, we've helped and continue to help to feed thousands of people there. But I can also tell you that hundreds, and in fact, I would say thousands have come to Jesus Christ as a result of these efforts for which you have, uh, in which you have also had a part through your prayers and your support. So thank you for your support in advance. Be obedient to the Holy Spirit. You could do it through our webpage. You could do it by writing to our address here. And I want to thank you, Brother Dean, and your ministry, because you have been an integral part of this. You have supported these efforts, not just with your prayers, but financially. And we want to thank you and your ministry and all of those who support you and have supported these efforts uh, from getting so many stoves, helping with the water, helping with uh, uh, so many financial needs and the building of that church also in Zaporizhia that is now just busting at the seams with people like some 500 people and two services and still can't fit everybody in we're gonna have to start a third service there because they've got over 1200 people attending a church that was left with uh, just over 100 people when when the war began so God is moving and God is working but we um, we do rely on the prayers and support of God's people. But Brother Dean, I kind of went long there um, and want to get back to you. Yeah. Well, I was just thinking as you were saying that we had a, an expression when I grew up in church says you can't beat God giving. In other words, you know, <clears throat> you give and he's going to give back to you. He's going to restore it and it's going to be uh, and over an abundance of what we give. We don't give to get, but we give because it's a principle of, like you were saying, sowing and the principle of reaping. And I, I can't help believe that the, the more that we give, the more we're blessed. And we've been seeing it in our finances. The more we give out, the more comes in. Just like this check that came in Sunday that just blew me away. It was something totally unexpected. And what that has done is given me the opportunity to sow more in there. You know, we have expenses, yes, but then it frees up other finances to where we can sow again. I'm telling you, brother, some more is going to be on the way because I, I have so much enjoyed watching God move as we sow. You know, it, it just makes me joyful. And God has blessed us to where we can be a blessing you know, uh, in Deuteronomy, I think it's 818 or something like that. It says that God gives us the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant here on the earth. And the way we have caused that to happen is God brings it in and we give it out. And then it comes back. And as we're doing that, 
in the process, we're establishing the covenant of God, this new covenant. You know, we know that it is the, to where we get to, you know, is preaching the gospel. We get to go into the kingdom of God. Oh man, it's such a blessing. So I'm enjoying giving and I'm going to do some more, brother. You can expect it very soon. Praise God. Brother Dean, thank you. And thank you on behalf of all the places in the world that you've helped. And on behalf, I mean, there are so many souls that you've helped to win into the kingdom of God. And that is what it's about. Um, bringing in the people into God's kingdom. And as you mentioned, God prospers us in order for the extension of God's kingdom. There is a purpose to that prosperity and that blessing. It is that we may be have, we would have resources to invest in God's kingdom and uh, praise God for the opportunities that we have to do that. Well, um, our Time is running uh, quickly here. We want to pray for America. Uh, this is Labor Day. This is not Fourth of July or or, or a, another such holiday. But nonetheless, it's an important holiday when many people are at home, many people are resting, many people are with family and friends and enjoying perhaps a barbecue and one of the last weekends off before many uh, children start school. Some have already, many have already started. But uh, we want to pray for a spiritual renewal in this nation. We want to pray for a fresh awakening of God's spirit in the church. It starts with the church. It starts with believers. But you know what? God can save the unsaved. And um, you know, I've heard of the testimony that Jim Carrey, the famous comedian, that he's gotten saved. He's talking about Jesus. Uh, um, I've heard that, uh, you know, I heard the testimony of Dog the Bounty Hunter. Uh, he's come to the Lord. He's serving God now. I uh, understand he's starting a ministry. So uh, God is working. God is saving the most unusual <laughs> uh, people. And, uh, and, and if God can save them, God can save others. And God is saving others. But we need to continue to pray for America and for one another. So, Brother Dean, would you pray for America? If you're watching us in Nepal, uh, like you are, Pastor Deepak, and, and perhaps someone watching us in Ukraine and other nations, just agree with us right now. If we you hear us praying for America, pray for us. Pray for America. Pray for Canada. But um, And there are still raging fires in that nation. Pray for those that have suffered so much from these devastating, uh, the devastating effects of the hurricane that went through Florida and uh, Georgia and South Carolina. Uh, it also damaged Cuba. Pray for those that have uh, lost loved ones and lost their homes and belongings in Hawaii and Maui. Um, there are uh, pray for Ukraine, pray for those that are laboring to help those who cannot help themselves. And let's pray for an end to this awful war in Jesus name. So brother Dean, there's so much to pray for. <laughs> oh, so, <laughs> so many things, so many things, so many needs. Yes. But all but, things are possible with God. Right. Amen. I was about to say that. <laughs> Same spirit, my brother. Oh, Father, we just lift up the United States of America, and we ask that you would continue to stir up people by your spirit, that there will be those that will be touched by your spirit that would come into the kingdom of God, that it would be such a spiritual renewal that it would be almost a, a, hard for us to fathom what you can do by your spirit. So we ask, Father, that you would, by your spirit, renew this nation back to its spiritual roots. And we thank you for what you have already done. And we thank you for all of the pastors who have been standing. I say, be refreshed in Jesus' name. And Without fear, stand up and preach the word and allow the Holy Spirit to move and let the renewal start in the churches and then let it expand 
all across the nation. We come against the division that has tried to destroy our nation. And these negative things that we keep hearing about, we say be stopped in Jesus' name. And we lift up the other nations that were mentioned, Lord, that you will work in each of those nations as well. And we thank you, Father, because uh, by, you can do things by your spirit that we can never do. So we ask, Father, please move in these nations. And Father, we ask that this war in the Ukraine be stopped now in Jesus' name. And Father, I ask you, touch President Putin's life, that he may come to a saving knowledge of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Brother Dean. And thank you all who have tuned in. Please share this broadcast. And if you tune in late, go back to the beginning and watch from the start. Many good things. Prayer for healing. Pray for breakthrough and encouraging words. And as Brother Dean said earlier in the broadcast, watch what you hear. Watch what you allow your ears to to hear. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. God richly bless you. And remember, don't look at how big your need or problem may appear. Put your eyes on Jesus. He is much bigger, much greater than any need or problem you may be facing. And he has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God richly bless you.